In this video, I'm showing you three quick and simple ways to clean up your backgrounds in Photoshop. My name is Pai, and I'm one of the founders of Lynn and Jersa Photography and SLRLounge.com. We're teaming up with Adorama to bring you a new series of photography tutorials called Master Your Craft right here on Adorama TV. So let's dive in. Hello friends, my name is Pai, welcome to Adorama TV. So look, I find myself oftentimes in Photoshop doing very quick and simple background fixes. I thought I'd make a nice and easy video that kind of summarizes the three techniques I'm using most often. Before we dive in, this is a great time to pause and download the exercise file. So you should have four JPEGs. Let's start with the first technique, which is our plate method. So with the plate method from Lightroom, it's actually really simple. Look, you got a shot here. I like the expression of the shot, but we have a car going on in the background here we have a blank background. So all you're gonna do is choose another image that kind of has a fix in the background. Maybe it doesn't have the same expression. So what we're gonna do is just edit the image however you'd like, okay? So I'm gonna start with just the modern soft light. And honestly, it looks pretty darn good from here. I'm gonna back off the uh, tint a tiny bit and maybe warm it up a little. Okay, so let's go plus two. Now, what you're gonna do once you have it edited however you'd like, it can be whatever you'd like go ahead and just synchronize the settings to the other image. So you can do this by selecting both images, press Control Shift S or Command Shift S. Go ahead and just check everything so long as there aren't any local adjustments. Make sure both images look pretty much identical. And what you're gonna do is select both, right click, go edit in, and then say open as layers in Photoshop. I'm gonna be doing all of these fixes without a tablet. So I do prefer, whenever I go into Photoshop, I do prefer using my Wacom tablet. Uh, it's quite a bit more precise. It gives us much more control and, and flexibility. Uh, but a lot of us are on the move or we don't have access to it. So let's just use the mouse. You can use it for all these uh, techniques that we're about to show you. Okay, we're into Photoshop. So all I'm going to do is place the nice clean image over the other image, okay? And if you want, if they're both kind of identical in nature, you could do this through the auto align tool. But since there's a person in there, I'm going to do this just manually. And all I'm going to do is just lower the opacity a little bit so I can see the underlying image, okay? So we're just gonna bring this right over. So matching up the line on our shoulder. And then I'm gonna turn the opacity back up. Now what I'm gonna do is hold down Alter Option, press the mask. This is gonna add a black mask. And as we know, you paint white if you wanna reveal and black if you wanna conceal. So all I'm gonna do is paint white to reveal the underlying layer to remove the car. Now this is nice because if I were to do any other method here, like if I was to, I'd either have to select the arm, you know, which is a little bit difficult, or if I do like say content aware fill on this area, watch this, content aware fill, if I turn this on, it's probably not gonna know. Actually, let's do it over this layer. I'm gonna show you how to use this tool in just a second. But content aware fill over areas of contrast like this is not great and it doesn't give you good results. So it's much easier to do this technique that I just showed you where you use the plate and you simply grab the other layer, paint over it. And if you have a little area like this that doesn't quite look right, well, what we can do is hold down Alt, Control, Shift, E and merge that to a new layer and then select this little piece right here press shift backspace and then it'll quickly make well, quick work of that. So that's the plate method. Let's go ahead and now go back and let's show you another method. I'm gonna do content aware fill this time. So let's grab this image. These are again the JPEG files that came straight off the GFX. So I'm gonna go ahead and just apply a look. Now this one was shot in hard light, so I'm gonna go with a pastel look and I'm gonna select hard light. So these are lighting condition based presets, which is nice because it gets us pretty much exactly where we wanna go in a click. So what I'm gonna do now is just go edit in. Again, you edit however you would like, okay? So it totally doesn't matter. I'm just getting this to a place where it looks mostly finished. And I'm gonna go ahead and open it into Photoshop. So whenever you have a background area that's kind of easily selectable and away from areas of contrast, this tool works wonders. So in a case like this, I don't really want to see this bright white sky above this mountain, right? So I'm going to select my lasso tool. And again, this doesn't have to be super precise. I'm just going to go and drag this right along here 
to select the edge of the mountain, and then I'm gonna select the entire sky. This is my selection. If you wanna do this over a new layer, you totally can. I'm so often coming in here to do something quick, and I just do it over the existing layer. But I, again, up to you. Most professionals recommend you do that on a new layer. Press at this point, once you have your selection, shift backspace. This is gonna bring up the fill menu and you're gonna to go to the drop down, select content aware. I want you to turn on color adaptation when you're selecting areas of the background that have to do with more with color graduation. This is one of those cases. If it's more about matching texture of the background, you're gonna leave this option off and that tells Photoshop to kind of focus more on texture versus color. It's gonna do both, but right now, it's gonna kind of prioritize the color graduation. Press OK, and what you'll see is Photoshop is gonna do its magic, repairing everything. If you have little bits and pieces like this right here, you can select it, press Shift J to select the patch tool and just drag it over another area right next by, and it's done. And you can see the difference. If I place those two images side by side, the one on the right, that final image, looks far more polished than the one on the left side where you kind of see that bright open white space. Okay, so method three is to use a moderate opacity clone stamp. We're gonna go ahead and just process this image very quickly. I'm gonna select backlit from the modern pack and um, all I'm gonna do is add a radial filter over him. I think it's fun to kind of see the actual editing workflow because this is how I, I would actually edit the image. You guys can see exactly what we do. So it's not a mystery. So go ahead and grab this, take it into Photoshop just like we did last time. So I'm gonna press F just to knock away anything else on my screen. So let's go ahead and go zoomed in just a bit. I'm gonna create a new layer. So we're gonna go ahead and press Control J or Command J to jump this to a new layer because we're gonna follow good principles here. Go ahead and select the clone stamp tool by pressing S. Now what we're gonna do is use a rather, well, kind of a moderate amount of flow. So let's keep flow at about 50%. This is gonna adjust the speed in which the clone stamping kind of comes in. It's flow, like if you think of a hose, it's kind of slowing down the water pressure as opposed to opacity, which is the maximum amount of the effect that can be painted in, okay? So we wanna lower flow. I'm gonna leave opacity at 100% though. I prefer using this technique over areas of the background that I kind of want to repair and ones that are slightly blurry and a little bit textured, okay? So let's go ahead and do this. With that selected, I'm gonna hold down Alter Option. We're gonna sample and you're gonna make the brush roughly the size of whatever's you wanna fix. So I'm gonna kind of just remove some of the distractions like that little spot right here. I'm gonna paint in a little bit more dirt, okay? Now, if I wanna add a little bit more, I totally can. And you want it to be roughly around the same area. So if you go too far back, like over here and paint it in, you'll notice that this area is a little bit sharper than what we just painted in, right? So start a little bit closer, paint in, and going at that kind of moderate flow makes it a very convincing overall effect, okay? So again, I can kind of go right here. I'm gonna shrink the brush down to roughly around the same area that I'm fixing paint right up until his pant leg and you can go in and, and get it as detailed as you'd like okay so if you want to get it a little more accurate shrink down your brush I'm using the brackets to do that quickly and then just go in and automatically the brush edge hardens a bit when you shrink it down so it kind of helps you to get a little more precise I'm gonna do the same thing right over these areas okay so like right here right here, I'm just basically removing the, the dark spots. So essentially, if you ever wonder what it is that I'm removing from a background, I'm looking for areas that are overly dark, like those black patches, or areas that are overly bright, like these little tiny highlights, things that could essentially be distracting. The other things that I find distracting is when certain shapes don't match up to other shapes. For example, I like these like, I don't know what they are, leaves, weeds, whatever they are. But over here, the shapes of these don't match anything else in the scene. So to me, it kind of stands out. So what I'm gonna do is increase the size of the brush. I'm gonna grab these guys and then paint it over these guys, okay? Now, if your brush is a little bit too big like that go around, then we kind of get a little bit too much sky in there. What I'm gonna do this time is actually sample right here. I'm gonna bring that dirt over here so it kind of matches up and then I'm just going to paint up and eliminate those guys right there, okay? I can do the same thing, kind of removing that piece. And now I can actually remove that, that stick that's going straight up as well. I'm gonna do the same thing there. So holding down Alt again, I'm just gonna replace and kind of paint over this guy. I don't like certain areas to repeat, right? So there's kind of patterns over here that are repeating. So just Alt sample over the tree and pull that piece in. 
So as you can see, this technique works really nicely, especially when the background is kind of blurred and textured. We can sample and pull those areas of texture in to kind of repair the background however we like. Okay, that looks awesome. I'm gonna go ahead and save it out. Now check out the before versus the after. Again, super easy way of cleaning up your backgrounds. All right, y'all, that's it. These are the techniques that I use most to clean up my backgrounds. If y'all enjoyed, if you guys want more tips, more tricks on Photoshop and on editing, let me know. Comment below, let me know what you guys would like to learn. Give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel, of course. Turn on notifications as well, so when I do post a video next Friday, back here at the same time, same place, y'all are actually notified. You have, to, you have to tell YouTube you want those notifications. All right, guys, I'll see y'all in the next video. Peace.